everyone welcome back to my channel welcome back to another digital moment with Tarina if you're new to my channel please hit that subscription button subscribe guys leave a comment like and share this video with someone with your friends and family go ahead and share it thank you so much for your support in today's video I am going to talk about being a Jamaican teacher here in the UAE part one Welcome on guys. Well, as I said earlier, I'm going to talk about what is it like being a Jamaican teacher here in the UAE. And disclaimer, this is my experience. I'm not talking about anyone else. I'm not speaking for anybody else. No, Peter, Jane, or John. It's about Terina. This is my experience. Okay? So, as you know earlier, I came to the UAE in 2017. And trust me, <laughs> what an experience it has been so far. Okay, so I'm going to talk about identity and culture. Okay, identity and culture. So it's part one. So part two is coming up soon. All right, AC, I'm in my Jamaican t shirt. I'm representing for my country. Now, when I came here in 2017, I had sister locks in my hair. Yes, sister locks or dreadlocks, you know, whatever you can, whatever you call it. So a part of my identity was, you know, being a black female with sister locks coming from the Caribbean. So my students, you know, some of them, that's the first time they are seeing a person with sister locks with this type of hair. So some of the time they would come and say, Miss, can I touch it? Can I touch it? Can I, what's this? Why is your hair like this? Is it rope? Is it snake? I said, no, it's my hair. It's just like, and they would touch it. And you know, they would be so amazed. Even some of the parents and teachers would come to me and say, how did you make your hair like that? So that was, you know, my identity. And at the time, I was the only black female working in that school when I, when I started um, in September of 2017. I was the only black female. So can you imagine that? It was like every time someone would pass me and I... So, yup, I'm black. I'm here. <laughs> Not that they are, you know, they are not um, black teachers in any other school, but at my present school, I was the only black female. There were some um, males, um, black male teachers there as well. And they would just, the students would automatically think that we are related, you know. Another thing that happened, being a Jamaican here, persons would ask me, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Jamaica. Is that in Africa? I said, no. In the Caribbean. Same, same Africa. I said, no, it's not the same. The Caribbean, you know, made up of islands surrounded by water. Africa is a continent with many different countries. But you're black. Same, same African. I said, okay. So that is one of the things that we experience here as um, te Jamaican teachers. Persons, most persons just think that we are Africans. You know, we are from Africa, we are from Ghana, we are from Nigeria, um, you know, some other African countries. But even though we try to explain to some of them, they still don't um, understand. So we just leave it at that. You know, knowing that, you know, I have, my roots are from Africa, I don't mind it sometimes. I don't mind. <laughs> so, Another thing that happens uh, to me as a Jamaican here in the UAE is that per sometimes people automatically think that I am a nanny. I don't know why, but persons think that I am a nanny. I am not saying that, you know, there's anything wrong with being a nanny. You know, I have great respect for persons, you know, no matter their profession. But people would, you know, sometimes ask me, uh, where are you from? 
what job you do? Are you a nanny? I said, no, I'm a teacher. So sometimes unless they, when they hear, you know, the conversation, they hear me speak, they will say, okay, yes, um, whatever. But I get oftentimes mistaken for a nanny or for an African, a Nigerian or someone from Ghana. Okay, so another thing uh, that happens as to me as a Jamaican here is that some persons are fascinated when I tell them I am from Jamaica. They say, what? Bob Marley? You know Bob Marley? You sing both? And I said, yes, same country. So persons would automatically just, the first thing they would say is, um, Bob Marley, you sing both. And the men, especially the men, they would say Chris Gale. Yes, especially Indians. They, you know they love cricket, right? So when you know they would ask me where are you from i said i'm from jamaica chris gale oh 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 you know chris gale you know you know bravo you know samuels i'm like no nope, i don't know them <laughs> but i am a proud jamaican so once you know once i start naming our icons or celebrities we said yep same country but persons some persons always talk about our music right they always talk about the music and trust me <laughs> they know some songs that i don't know <laughs> that i don't listen to you <laughs> it will surprise you all some arabs they would just be singing these songs and i said what they said yes miss we watch youtube <laughs> so yes persons uh love jamaicans being uh but marley you're saying bold and they love the music um chris gill you know cricket so once you say you're a Jamaican, they can identify you by, you know, those icons. And, you know, as I said earlier, reggae music. And another thing, uh, being a Jamaican here, when I came here and I saw the dress, all oh, the, the ladies, you know, the Arab women, oh, they dress in their abayas and their shalas, they, you know, they're well covered. I'm like, I'm not used to it. You know, I'm not used to it. You know, our culture is that we dress freely. We dress whatever we in whatever we want to wear, you know, or short shorts and dresses and, you know, tight jeans and things like that. But women here, you know, Arab women here, you know, they are very conservative and I've gotten to love that. You know, since I've been here, I've bought a lot of clothes, you know, like long skirts and most of my blouse that I wear to work, you know, long sleeves, because um, it's it, the culture is to dress conservative here. Okay, even dressing as a teacher here, we are more, uh, it's, it's more relaxed. You know, Jamaica, we dress in more tailored suits as teachers and um, skirts and dresses with our leggings, our stockings. Here, it's more relaxed with the dressing in terms of, yes, persons are well covered in terms of wearing um, long cardigans and jackets and blouse with long sleeves or long skirts or palazzo pants, you know, it's different. But I've, I've, I've grown to love it because it's, I think it's respectful, it's, it's, it's respectful when you are in a country and you adapt to their culture in terms of how they dress, right? And as a teacher here, I have to um, abide by, you know, guidelines in the way that I dress. Not only to go to school, but even to, you know, go out sometimes. You don't know who will see you. When I was doing my second interview, that was one of the things that the, the principal said to me that the area in which I am, I was going to live, you know, it's very conservative. It's very, what's that word? Authentic to their culture, right? It's very traditional. So I would have to consider the way that I dress to go to the mall or the way that I dress to go on the street um, versus the way teachers dress in the city. So that's one of my experience here as a Jamaican teacher. 
So let's talk about the language here, okay? So as you know, in the UAE, the native language is Arabic, okay? So, and you don't have to speak Arabic to be a teacher here in the UAE or in the Middle East, okay? If you are a, if you are hired as a teacher, you are going to teach English subjects, math, science, English, uh, social studies, reading, and so on. But the language barrier, oh my God, it, 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 it was super challenging when I just started. No, it's easier because I get to, I know a little bit Arabic, and that's another video, kind of forgot, research a little bit more words, tell you. <laughs> but when I just came here, and it's still happening, uh, even when persons are speaking in English to you, it is difficult for you to understand, right? All right, say for instance, I go to the store and I want to buy this book. Sometimes I can say, what's the cost for this book? I have to say, this, how much? How much, you know? Durham, so much. So I realized that, you know, I, I couldn't give complete sentences or say what I want to say in complete sentences. I have to chop it up, right? And it's like broken English. We call it broken English, but I don't know what it is, but that's how, you know, some persons sound. You have to say it like that, okay? Um, instead of saying, where are you going? Someone would say, where you go? And in class, if... A student would ask me something you know or I would expect them to say miss what should I do miss what do what I do so it, 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 it took me a while to understand and you know to communicate especially with the students that I would have in class that you know know little they speak a little English but I still had to try my best to communicate with them so I would repeat a lot and I, I learned to speak slowly okay I learned to speak slowly and I used a lot of actions um, to get my message across and sometimes you know as teachers you always have that one or two students in the class that you know they are good at English or they are very outspoken so they would understand me more or better and then they will try to explain it to the other students. I remember this girl, um, it was my second year with this current school. Uh, she was a darling, she wanted to be a teacher. So when I was trying to explain, explain myself or explain something to the students, she would come and say, Miss, you want me to explain it to them? And she would come at the front of the class and she would speak in Arabic to them. And the kids just, oops, they understand, they know everything, so they just do the work. And then even last year, with this current grade one class that I'm teaching now, we, we, want, we started using this new platform, Nearpod. And guys, I, I was explaining to my students how to log on to the new platform, you know, online um teaching and learning it's new for all of us and it's a little difficult more difficult i should say for the younger students right and i was trying to explain to them where to go uh which link to click on when they click on the link to put in the code and 30 minutes i was there and i said guys anyone log on maybe one or two students would have done it before they said you know what is happening? Please speak to me. Let me know if you're able to log in. And out of the blues, I just hear parents say, Miss, do you want me to say it in Arabic? And I said, please do. And, and I'm not kidding you. Within two or three minutes, more than half the class was logged on. They, 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 they put in the code. Everyone was ready to do the activity. And I was taking, it took me like 30 minutes to get two persons to log in. So the language barrier, trust me, it can be very challenging. It can be very daunting and discouraging, but guess what? We have to find ways to communicate with 
with our students and not only my students but uh, my co-workers because I work with um, other teachers who that um, English is not their second language you understand so it's a little tedious but you will get over it if you're interested in teaching here you will get over it and as I said before these are these are my experience this is no, I'm not to do with nobody else understand me this is my experience so the way I look you know be being a Jamaican coming from the Caribbean sometimes I would have to tell people like when they ask me again where are you from I would have to take them into Florida and I said you know you know Florida you know in the United States they would say yes we know, we know America I said okay to go to Jamaica I would like be on a flight for one and a half hours so when I put it like that then they said oh Jamaica is right there it is close yep and I remembered what I'm going to share this one with you <laughs> I remembered uh, I was having a, a social studies class right and we were looking at the map of the UAE so a uh, who tell me no figure sure Jamaica and the map this boy said miss your country is like this tiny tiny country you're from miss Walla, look at it very tiny <laughs> yes yes I said you know that's it my country is a small country compared to your country but guess what I love it you know with little but with talawa thank you so much for watching my video remember to like share and subscribe okay